$25 billion on games in 2018. But it isn't just the big name gaming companies that are making a ton of cash, it's the gamers too. Playing games is now a full-time job that can earn some gamers millions by the time they hit 30. Just take Kuro Takasami. He's 26 years old and has already earned more than $3 million playing games like Dota 2. But Kuro isn't alone. There are gamers all around the world who have perfected the money-making formula. I mean, winning $250,000 was absolutely life-changing. I mean, because I've been trying to practice getting to this scene for, you know, at least a couple years now through other games. But now that's finally blowing up and getting that money and proving to myself and even my parents that I can do this, uh, definitely life-changing. I can finally make a career out of it, so. Generally speaking, there are two big ways that gamers can earn a living esports and live streaming. Competing in esports tournaments and live streaming gameplay is a lucrative business. Esports is basically competitive gaming at a professional level. But you aren't just playing against gamers online. Instead, you are physically going to an organized event where there's a cash prize at stake. There's no sanctioning body that controls esports as a whole. Esports at the moment is, is pretty wide open. It's pretty actually disorganized. It looks organized from, from the outside, but once you get inside, I think there's a lot of questions that are still answered. There, there's no, for instance, um, overarching governing body that kind of determines everything within every esport. In fact, there's still a massive amount of confusion and a massive amount of discussion on what actually constitutes an esport. Each esports league is based around a specific game. Kind of like how each sports league is based around a specific sport. Esports events are typically held at major sports arenas like the Barclays Center. These events are streamed for fans to watch and they're also televised on networks like ESPN. Um, it's a mixture of, it, it almost feels a little bit like a music festival where there's the main stage with the main competition and thousands of, peop thousands of people in their seats. Um, but if, you, if you're not necessarily interested in the game that's going on, there's activities set up all around the concourse. In 2017, esports generated $655 million globally. And by 2021, it's on pace to make $1.6 billion. Nowadays, an esports company's value actually rivals that of professional sports. Companies like Cloud9 and 100 Thieves own a number of different teams dedicated to a specific esports league. Cloud9 has 13 teams dedicated to games like League of Legends, Fortnite, PUBG, Rocket League, Counter-Strike, and more. According to Forbes, esports company Cloud9 is valued at $310 million. That's more than Major League Soccer's Seattle Sounders, which values at $295 million. Like any other sport, esports companies offer their players salaried contracts for a specific term. Teams can even trade their players to other teams. So what's a typical gamer's salary? Well, salaries can vary based on what team you're playing on and what esports league you're in. Basically, signing to a team will, generally speaking, the contracts uh, entail, you know, they will pay you salary, generally speaking, um, and they'll get a small cut. I think the standard is around 15 to 20% of prize winnings. Um, some teams also do sponsorship deals, so if they have their own individual sponsors, uh, you can get a cut. For games like Overwatch, minimum player salaries are $50,000. But for games like League of Legends, the average player salary is over $320,000. Players can also make more money on top of their base salaries. The gamers typically get a cut of the cash prize pool from the tournaments. Over the years, the cash prizes at stake in esports have gotten much bigger. Multiple tournaments now offer multi-million dollar prize pools. The largest prize pool in esports history at a single event was Dota 2's international competition in 2018. That had a total prize pool of $25.5 million. First place took home $11.2 million, and second place got $4 million. Within Counter-Strike, as far as I know, the, major the majority of the professional teams get the majority of the prize pool, where in the past, um, the organization got the got the larger chunk of it to kind of recoup expenses. Now, players are getting the majority of the prize money that they win. I think, you know, some organizations might take smaller cuts, like 10% or something like that, and the players split the rest, but that might vary from game to game. Red Bull, the U.S. Air Force, and Rocket Mortgage sponsor teams and esports events in hopes of reaching esports audience of about 380 million viewers. In 2018, of esports' $900 million revenue, $353.3 million came from sponsors. A company like Red Bull has 22 esports athletes, and according to PESA, a typical Red Bull athlete pulls in an average of $91,000. But streaming live gameplay is another huge moneymaker. 
a Twitch streamer gets a lot of views. The, the Twitch streamers at the moment, um, you know, make way well more money, um, especially the really, really big ones, I think, than most competitive players do in esports. Sites like Twitch and YouTube provide gamers with lots of monetizable eyeballs. Over 850 million hours of content was watched in October of 2018, and its most watched game is Fortnite. You know, I was streaming full time for almost three years, but this past year streaming Fortnite, um, I have literally went from 80,000 followers on Twitch to over 1.6 million. And on YouTube, I went from 70,000 to now 1.2 million. So it definitely has had a huge impact on my gaming career. Unlike esports gamers, streamers make money whenever they go live. They don't have to rely on tournaments to earn cash. Streamers make money through paid subscriptions, bits, donations, ads, sponsorships, and merchandising. Fans will pay to subscribe to a Twitch partner streamer. Twitch partners are streamers that have a sizable audience and stream either part-time or full-time. So the bigger the audience, the more money is to be earned. Cheer bits are digital goods that viewers can buy to support streamers' channels. Each bit is worth a penny. The more you buy and give it to your favorite streamer, the more money they get. Streamers like Cypher PK has earned 210,000 bits from a single person during a live stream. That translates to $2,100. Then there are donations where fans can pay streamers whatever they want. Streamers can also earn revenue from ads that run on Twitch, or sponsor streams backed by brands like Scuff Gaming Controllers. Some gamers even have their own merch. I do have the other merch, but right now I'm just wearing the long sleeve red uh, sweater and you guys have one more day to buy the merch. Gamers like Tyler Ninja Blevin stream on sites like Twitch for 12 hours each day. That translates to him making more than $500,000 a month from Twitch playing games like Fortnite. With the global gaming market expected to hit $148.1 billion in 2019, and sites like Twitch growing its viewership by over 40% in 2018, gamers can expect to pull even more cash in the years ahead.